block or not to block? Now there's a question for you. Do you block your finished knitting projects? I'm relatively new to knitting. I'm more of a quilter than a knitter. But I do know if I block my finished quilts, they look and hang so much better than if I don't. So my thinking is, why would I not block my finished knits? I've just finished a pair of socks, so I thought I'd take you through the process that I follow to block my socks. There are lots of ways that you can block your finished projects, ranging from a light dressing to a pressing to something that I'm going to do today, which is a full wet block. So I'm going to take you through that process and show you what I do. Now I'm sure there's lots of people out there that have other methods for doing this but this is the method I'm using and I've used it on a few other projects and I've been very satisfied with the results and you don't need a lot of equipment to do this either. To block my socks I don't need much in the way of equipment. A bucket of tepid water, some more wash, my socks and an old towel. The only other thing I need is a surface that I can lay my wet socks onto and leave to dry on their own without touching for a couple of days. So let's have a quick chat about the soap that you can use in the wet blocking process. I've got a whole variety of products on the table in front of me and any one of them would be suitable as the soap in my wet blocking process. Some are more available than others and some are more expensive than others. So let me take you through them. So let's start with the cheapest and most commonly available. Yes, you've guessed it, that's this one. It's the Common Old Garden Dishwashing Soap. Fairy Liquid in the UK or Dawn in the US, I think they're pretty much the same kind of product. You use them for washing your dishes. Wash for wash, there's no doubt that the dishwashing soap will be a lot cheaper than any of these other products but it's not being designed for washing or blocking woolens. If you do go ahead and use the dishwash soap, remember a couple of things. First of all, choose a very mild brand, one that's not going to strip out the natural oils from your woolen project. And secondly, be aware that you are going to have to rinse any excess detergent out of the blocked project. With these products here, you don't need to rinse after it comes out of the blocking water. So that's a bonus because it removes one stage of the process. So that's ordinary dishwash soap. So let's look at these three products. They've all been designed to wash wool, silk or delicate fibres. These you can use in your washing machine. This one, as far as I can tell, is only for hand wash, so you can only put that in a basin. I don't believe it can go in your washing machine, so that's the difference between these brands. These two here contain lanolin, ideal for washing woolens. This product does not contain any lanolin. Euclan here I've got in two sizes and two different scents. In our household, we like the smell of jasmine, so I've got a big bottle of that for us in the house. And then when I'm giving a project away, a woolen project, hand knit project away, I give one of these smaller bottles with it so that the recipient knows how to look after the project. Today I'm blocking wool socks, so I'm going to use a lanolin based product. So I'm going to use the Euclan here. Okay, so here's my bucket of water. I'm just going to put a little bit of the lanolin enriched euclan in it. I don't think I'm going to need any more than that. And I'm just going to swish it around just to, to get that soap to dissipate through the water. And then I'm going to pop my socks in and just leave them to soak. Wool is uh, naturally water repellent, so it can take quite a while for water to penetrate the fibres of the wool. So once I've got the wool in there, it's going to take something in the region of 10 to 15 minutes for the water to actually reach the core of the wool fibre. So I'm just going to leave that to one side while that's doing its job. You see how it's floating at the moment, we want to get that fully submersed. 
So I will leave that to do its job. I'll put it out the way and we'll just have a quick chat about what's going to happen next. By the way, you've noticed there's very little in the way of um, lather. There's no soap suds. It's a very low sudding um, product. You don't really need the suds because it's no rinse. That's why you've got no sud. If you use the fairy liquid, you're going to have a lot more sud, which is why you have to rinse afterwards as well. So while my socks have a soak in that blocking water, I'll have a quick chat with you about why I like to wet block. Well, there's lots of reasons why I like to do that. Um, let's start with the obvious one. When you're knitting, your yarn can roll around all over the floor and get dirty. So that's number one. Um, by putting it in the water with that little bit of detergent, it's actually doing the job of washing the socks to some extent as well. Now they're not dirty dirty, they've just picked up um, surface dirt, so they don't need a scrub or anything. Why it's, you know, so it's absolutely fine just to leave them soaking in the water like that. Another reason I like to wet block is because when we knit, we are adding tension to the fibres. We, depending on whether we're a loose or a tight knitter, we're going to add more or less tension. And those fibres are going to be under some amount of stress. When you put, pop them in the water, then it gives the fibres a chance to relax. And it means that that tension that's got built in through the action of mani manipulating the wool through the needles can ease out. And that means that the stitches, like um, the stitches can relax and take on a better shape and fill out and plump up. So that's another reason. And then of course, the main reason that I like to wet block is because when the socks come out of the blocking water, they are thoroughly wet and it means I can then manipulate the size and shape of that sock to the size and shape that I want. So, and that's very important. Now, all of those things, by the way, ring true for when you make a quilt, which is why I, when I say I'm a quilter more than a knitter, and I knew that by blocking my quilts, I get a better looking quilt at the end of the day, I knew the same would be true for, for my knits. There are lots of other products that might help you in the bl blocking process. None of these are absolutely necessary. But things like sock blockers are useful. Let's move that bucket out of the way so you can see them. So these kind of things are useful. They're nice to display your socks if you've got a podcast, that's for sure. Um, but they're also designed to actually block your socks on. So I've got a couple of sizes here. Larger size for men's wear, smaller size for kids' wear. And this is what I'm going to be using today. New to me, new product to me. Aren't they nice? I really like these. So this is um, a size five to seven, women's size, UK five to seven. So I'm actually gonna try these um, blockers today to see what I think about them, but you don't actually need them. So don't think you have to have these, you don't. This is just a nice to have. Other things that are useful is a foam mat. Along with the foam mat, you're going to want a number of rust-free pins. These pins happen to be quilting pins, they're not knitting pins, but it doesn't really matter whether it's knitting, quilting or household sewing. As long as the pins are rust-free, that's what you're really looking for. Bear in mind that the project we're going to put onto it is wet. You don't want to have rust forming from a pin that's not rust-proof. So let's take this sock I got here as an example. I would, if this was wet, this is dry at the moment, but if this was wet, I would manipulate the shape of the sock to the size I want it to be. And then I would use the pins to keep that in place. And then I can pick the whole thing up and move it. And then that sock is not going to move. So if I needed the space to use for something else, it's ideal, I can pick the whole thing up and it's portable. Now this, this one's ideal for this particular size sock, but it wouldn't be much used for anything that was much bigger. 
so I would probably have to have a, a number of these boards and you can get them with cutouts in them they look like jigsaw puzzles and they slot together so that's ideal you can buy them like that they are designed for knitters again and they're probably going to be a um, that might have a premium because it's for knitting. So think out the box, think of other things you can use. It could be that your children have got some of these play mats, those are ideal. Another alternative is to use a yoga mat. That's not as thick, it's a little bit thinner, but it still is made of foam and it means you can pin into it. So think outside the box if you, if you want to save yourself some money. So my socks are just about ready to come out of the soaking solution and I'm going to very gently lift them, squeeze the excess water out of them and then put them onto the towel that I've got to one side here. I have used a no rinse product in my soaking solution. I used the, the Uclam, which was this product. So I use this product and it's a no rinse. It means that I don't have to now take my socks and put them in, an, in another vat of water. I don't need to do that. However, if I'd have used the um, dishwash soap, then I would definitely need to rinse any excess detergent out. Now, what you need to be careful about, if that is the case, is that the temperature that you take the socks out of, the water that you take it out of, the rinsing water is also of a similar temperature. If you go from hot to cold, then that's a, you stand a good chance of felting your wool socks so avoid doing that don't you want to avoid temperature variation and you want to avoid agitation so those are the two worst things you can do with wool so don't do either of those things but just be be aware that if you have used the um, the dishwash soap then you do need to rinse at this stage I don't need to because this was a no rinse solution Right, so let's get these socks out. They've been soaking long enough. The water's penetrated right to the core of the fibre. So here are the socks. They're out of the, the water. I have a gentle... Um, I didn't wring them. I just gently squeezed them. Now I'm going to wrap them in the towel and I'm just going to roll them, roll the towel up and then I'm going to press. Now, I'm under a, a camera here. If I wasn't under the camera, I'd actually put this on the floor and actually stand on it to actually get as much of the water out as possible. So I'm squeezing, 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 and the towel is absorbing all the excess moisture. And by doing that, it means that it's going to take less time for it to dry. That makes sense, doesn't it? So the towel's pretty wet now, but the socks, the socks are just, just damp. Okay, they're not too bad now at all, so. They're not ringing wet, that's for sure. And I say, I'm going to give these sock blockers a try today. So this is the toe and this is the heel. So I'm gently going to put these over the blockers and see what we think about it. I haven't used a sock blocker before. I know lots of people use sock blockers to show their socks off. size though, so right. So there we go, I'm actually going to just manipulate that. These are like my socks are a bit big for my blockers. Oh well. So what I'm doing here is I'm just pulling them over the, the wooden, just pulling those over the wooden blockers. Just going to make them look as neat and tidy as I can around the edge. I want to make the cuff look nice and square. And then one of the things I'm going to look for down here is I like to see if I've got the, the row. I can see a row a column of stitches. I like the column of stitches to be um, on top of each other, not going at a, you know, a wonky angle. I'll do that for this side, but I can see here. I'm trying to get those to be all in the line as well. Let's have a look down here. Again, I'm using my stitches. I'm looking at the row of stitches here to try and get those in the same position all the way down. I think that's not too bad. Okay, and I'm just going to... Oh, I quite like these blockers. These are quite nice. I'm just going to 
was going to come out there. Right, okay, that's one down. Let's push that one there. Let's get the other one on. So again, being as gentle as I can, put them on the blocker. Okay, right, so I may fuss with these a little bit more off camera just to get them exactly how I want, but I'm, overall I'm pretty happy with that. They're, they look like sock. <laughs> They've got the shape of a sock and um, the stitches of, you know, all plumped up and evened out. I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, I definitely will fuss a little bit more, but, but nonetheless, I think we're almost there. Um, and then I will leave these socks as they are on the blockers and I won't touch them again until they're perfectly dry. Now, that, that's also a good tip. Do not touch them until they're dry. Um, you want to let them have it. It could be a full day, it might be two days even before it's, it's really gone off. Depends on the humidity, I suppose, of your room. But don't touch them, and then they're going to dry with a memory, which means they'll go back to this same shape each and every time um, you, you wash them. It, it's it's different to blocking is very different to washing in so much that you are setting a shape and a size washing you're removing dirt um, but you're not setting it to a shape or size that happens in the blocking process so that's another reason for blocking it means that you're actually building in a memory into the fibers of the fabric and it means that it, they should retain sock shape from here on in. Okay, so here they are. I fussed with them and I'm quite happy with the way they're looking now. And I'm going to leave them. I'm just not going to touch them now. So there we go. That's it. I hope you enjoyed that. You enjoyed the process of watching me block my socks. If you haven't done it before, then perhaps you'll give it a go now yourselves. And if you do, let me know. Put a comment below and tell me how you got on. So thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the tutorial, then please do give us a thumbs up, give us a like and subscribe if you want to see more tutorials like this. And give us a comment, let us know what you want to see a tutorial on. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.